Hi-ho, Eric. Hi-ho, Chris. Good to see you again. Retrograde Amnesia is a member of the Greenlit Podcast Network, a coalition of creator-owned podcasts focused on video gaming, entertainment, and pop culture. Go to greenlitpodcasts.com to find out about all the great shows on the network. Or, and or, go to patreon.com slash retroim to visit us and support us on Patreon if you like. Get early access, bonus episodes, all kinds of cool stuff that Eric and I have created over the course of the past... 13 months. 13 months. 13 months. You can make a lot of shit in 13 months. Uh, Eric, would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Play them. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs, chapter by chapter, beat by beat. In this series, we are covering Chrono Cross. Tonight, we emerge from the darkness of the beyond and we head back home as a cat boy to discuss the matter with our mother. Catman. My name is Chris. I'm joined tonight by Eric. Hey, Eric. Hello, Chris. I always say tonight, but it actually could be today, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. We've done one day podcast ever. That's true. To purge. Night purge. Mm -hmm. Irony. Anyway, uh, we are also joined tonight by The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can join this conversation, or any conversation you like, at patreon.com slash retroim and join the Discord. We are also joined by The Fake Net, our post-production AI companion, who was placed in The Dip. Oh my god, it's dead! But survived. Initializing Fake Net. Judge Doom and his simple cartoon murder juice has no effect on my digital existence. Congratulations, Fake Net. I would love to put both of you in that shit just to see what happens. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Great film, Eric. It might be my favorite movie. Really? Yeah. It's high praise. I haven't watched it in a long time. It's fantastic. Okay. Who framed Roger Rabbit podcast coming 2024? So, I, this is the last time I'm going to use this expression, Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are continuing on in the dark middle chapter of this game. And we have, uh, we've got a new body, we've got new innate elements, we have a whole new team. And it was Sprig. We have a fucking Sprig who can transform into, into different enemies. I think she can transform into a, a cat burglar and maybe a paper boy too. I'm not sure. That's, I don't trust that. Yeah. And basically any of those of, of monsters that you, we've encountered that have multiple texts that would be cool to use, mm -hmm. Sprig can do that shit. Mocha so, Jean. Yeah, of course. So yeah, well, I, <laughs> who win a fight? M Mocha Jean or Mojo? <laughs> Mokujin. I don't think Mojo's got that many moves. I, I think you're right about that. Mokujin wins. Chicken. So to continue the plot, Eric, we got to go talk to our mother, mm -hmm. according to Sprig. A mother. And go explain the situation to Marge, Serge's mother, who is a portrait character, so we knew we were going to see her again. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go back, we uh, silently explain the situation, and Marge is shocked. Yeah, she says a whole bunch of periods. <laughs> yes, just like we always do when we're shocked. And the music stops. The scene then kind of fades away and then comes back in as, we, as if we're explaining her the whole fucking thing. Even the information that we've obtained about, you know, mom, I had a skull in my back pocket. Eventually mm. I found its ribs and now it's my friend. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And Marge... New music plays. Yes, new music plays. It's called Missing Peace. Lost Fragments. Clo yeah, 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 that works. Marge recaps our story like at the very end and she says, oh, that man told you to go to the Sea of Eden, which is what Lynx told us told Surge just at the end of the Fort Dragonia chapter. Uh, for some reason, Lynx wants us to return to the Sea of Eden. We don't really know why, because we felt like Lynx wanted Surge's body. He's a deceiver. And that was it. By the way, Lynx, infinitely more effective than the Gazel Ministry in acquiring bodies. Mm -hmm. Like Totally. <laughs> yeah, just, he, he like just one shot. He does that shit in like He's 17 focused. hours. Yeah, yeah, all good. So yeah, don't you think that the, that the song here, the missing piece, has a bit of the melody from the intro song? Yeah, in the FMV, there's that, some stuff that recycles yeah, in there. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's like a slower version of that thematic note. element. Yeah, but it never like ramps up into the to the fast pace, fast tempo that the that the original song did. So Marge is kind of lost when we try to explain yes. dimensional distortions of the other world, and mm -hmm. she notes that if something big is on the verge of happening, it may have all started 14 years ago on hmm. the night of the storm. Did you expect Marge to know lore? Eventually, she had to serve some kind of purpose other than Surge mom portrait. Right? I don't know. Chrono's mom didn't. Well, we're we're in the future now. Faze's mom did though. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Ark doesn't have a mother. 
Okay, so then we get a flashback, right? Boat on a world map. Yes. It's a darkened world map, and there's a cloud haze filter scrolling across the top. This this world map area, mm-hmm. it has these, uh, if you look closely, it has these various temples on different islands. I, I, I'm assuming this is the Sea of Eden, because Marge seems to know about the Sea of Eden. So it's a different uh, world map. Yeah, it's a different world map, but also those what, those temples are shaped in the same in the same manner in which the temples that we saw, uh, the, or that Surge saw in his uh, visions, his dragon tear visions, exploding with the black mushroom cloud. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. So Marge notes that Surge's dad Wazuki and his friend Miguel set out to the sea despite the storm because it was an emergency. Of course, I don't know what they were doing, uh, yes. but they were swallowed by the waves and lost consciousness. When they came to, they found themselves inside the Dead Sea a place where no living creature dares enter. She doesn't know what he saw or what happened, but the incident changed Serge's father forever. Miguel, who, by the way, was Lena's father, yeah. never returned. It was called the Dead Sea back then. It wasn't called the Dead Sea back then. It was called the Sea of Eden. Where's Serge's dad? I'm assuming gone forever, but... but uh, he came back. He came, Yeah, that's right. That's true. He came back. To tell so, her this story. Yeah, that's interesting. So, and uh, Serge wasn't with them. No. So how did Serge become what he is? Unless he already was what he was when this whole thing started. Before he was what he is. <laughs> yes. That's when the cogs of fate began to turn. Of course. Right? Yeah. What was the start of all this, Eric? So then the, the game kind of flashes back to the present mm-hmm. and <laughs> suddenly we just get a, a non sequitur voice asking us. Yeah, RKO out of nowhere. Yeah. If we're the ones that everybody is talking about, assuming that the, the villagers have told somebody about these <laughs> daddy's the, home the cat man the goblin lady and the uh, jester lady chief who are radius walking around town. pissed at this rabble rousing yes radius enters the room he cannot believe that lynx is really alive but he knows it's lynx yes That's he important. does uh he tells he, lynx to step the fuck outside yes declares himself a member of the acacia dragoons he must put a stop to us yes which you would not know this if you didn't visit him in the other world right because i think that's optional also he's retired so my my, my dude is kind of um boasting a bit here about his qualifications oh yeah a bit harley again employs the the old man slur of geezer mm-hmm. and warns him not to show off if he wants to live which again it's harley did a great line good line radius demands silence tells us to step outside yes i get into battle then i run away because my elements weren't configured and it's funny that radius is just at the door like yeah whenever you're ready we can do this <laughs> also going into battle uh harley, death place harley brink of death harley says do not underestimate the power of monsieur lynx one blow and it's off to the other world with you hell yeah which she is, can put people in the other world of course which the that has different implications in this game uh not not the death world but the other one radius but, yells on guard yes indeed radius is a pretty easy battle but he's cool uh, he has an ability called long shot mm-hmm. which is a samurai ass long range move where he puts his staff in a bato jitsu stance Chris, what, is, what are those words you just said? Bato jitsu stance. Bato jitsu stance. Bato jitsu stance. Is that ba- from Bushido Blade? <laughs> well, what are you doing? Is that in the bouncer? I learned it from the manga anime slash anime, uh, Raruni Kinshin. It's the, uh, it, but yes, it's in those games. Mm-hmm. It's the stance uh, that w- was used by sword fighters, you know, uh, samurai. Mitsurugi. 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 Where they put the... Uh, sword in the sheath and do the quick draw stuff and oh then, shit that is Mitsuruki yeah and then use the use the momentum created by the edge of the blade on the on the scabbard to create this like really powerful kind of slash does that work in anime it works <laughs> okay got a sword back there if you want to try it later uh, no, I'm good I Thank found you. it I didn't I, actually throw that sword away I don't know if you congratulations ever, I don't know Chris if you ever figured see our out. previous podcast a year ago dot com <laughs> yes uh, so then you have to fight him a little bit and he's not he's, he's easy honey I found my sword <laughs> Apparently, Radius hasn't found his sword. I wish he had a cane sword. That would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Instead, it's just one that you can store liquor in. I beat the shit out of this old man, and he <laughs> says, I stand defeated. Of course you do. Like, then, I, I messed him up, dude. Yeah. This is one of those things where it's like, prove your point by through battle. Yeah. Uh, where Because he doesn't believe us, but now that we've had a... The intimacy of battle has, has proven uh, our, that we're not lying to him. I just like the idea that Lynx is in here fairly peaceful, trying to explain himself. The old man, the leader, challenges him, and you embarrass him in front of the community. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... In his mom's house. <laughs> yeah. I guess they didn't want to render the mo- uh, Serge's mom's house as, yeah, as, as a battle background, yeah, so they outside. had to add that line. So suddenly we're back inside, and Radius says that he doesn't sense malice in our attacks, which is... How yes. he now believes us. Yeah, he asks if we are really not Lynx. He then asks if it's true that the general is still active in this other world. Mm-hmm. Home Arnie resumes. Mm-hmm. Radius notes that the general's been missing here for the past three years. Yes. So missing, not dead, missing. Then for some reason, like, the 
things that draw people into our party start becoming more automatic and less tenuous here. Yeah. Or more tenuous. Like, it's just, like, the, people just start collecting, like, dust because the Radius involuntarily joins our party. Yeah. He's just like, hey, Victory hey, music. I'm going. Do you think that they did this? Well, I mean, I, I feel like Radius, maybe he's a pretty important character, so he would maybe have a standing to join this party, but... Do you think they were, like, doing the body switch thing and they're like, oh, shit, we need to give them more characters to play with? I picture a boardroom meeting where someone's like, they can't just have Sprig when they go out to do shit. Give them a real character. Yeah. I know you love joke characters. Give him someone we respect. And this is how Radius joined our party. I feel like it's just the opposite where there's just, like, there was no body in the meeting room. Oh. <laughs> there was no oversight. People just started Start doing whatever. Started putting characters in this game uh, until it got out of control. So he has some more dialogue, but first give us the background on Radius. Yes. Radius's occupation is Arnie Chief Village. He just says, remember the Acacia Dragoons, Chris? Who's lying? I'm sorry. He's the village. No, he's not the Arnie Chief Village. <laughs> he's the Arnie Village Chief. Excuse me. His age. You want to take a guess at this one? 63. Wow. 62. Damn it. Good job, Eric. He's from the Xenon mainland, which we already kind of knew from the, the backstory of the other one. Uh, his height is 5'8". His weight is 119 pounds. His build is thin, and he is right-handed. you funny if he said his build was just old. Old geezer. <laughs> build geezer. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious in World and that still doing this shit. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> his Japanese name is Radius. No change there. Uh, his element is green. His weapon is a staff, which... Hell yeah. I think it's more of a sword, but whatever. He uses it like a sword. But his accent is normal. And his fortune is interesting. Uh, his fortune is the many lines laid before you, comma, shall merge into one. Hmm. 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 Anyway, so then he gives us some, well, I don't know, quests. Yeah, he notes there's a chance to save Viper and Riddell in the other world. Not this world. He's not optimistic about this world, which is the first time he said Riddell, too. So mm -hmm. I guess she's also equally imperiled here. Yes. Harley notes that this geezer is only going to get in the way. Yeah. Then I have capital letters, goodbye, Sprig. Yes. I got rid of Sprig pretty pretty quickly, too, because I, Radius is pretty good. He says, we must head to Termina to gather information about this world. He says not to worry, and that we will find a clue to return to the other world. It is interesting that, and th this is true of, of many characters throughout this game, but like most people are pretty accepting of the fact that Surge and friends are laying all upon them that there are multiple worlds, and they're yeah. just like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, like, the world thing's easy to swallow. Yeah. Body like, swap? No way, sir. <laughs> yeah, and Radius is very willing to go ahead and try to save things on this other side of the world, like or this other, other dimension, which he really has no tangible stake in. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to anybody else in town after this, or did you leave? No, I tried to put Radius in the front of the party and talk to the uh, the racist man in the front to see mm -hmm. if he's still called his dirty demi-humans or whatever. Yeah. He, he does. He does, yeah. yeah. Like, th this fact that we have beaten up the Elder and he's leaving the village to travel with us has not changed anyone's mind. They didn't want us to have to explore more dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, okay, we're not going to re rewrite anything. We're here. not doing a fourth Arnie. Get yeah. the hell out of here. Hell no. So then chapter changes. Yes, we go to the world map. Yeah, chapter's changing. It's called Termina. Termina. E Eric, uh, so uh, a foreword here about the... The, the game? The puns here in, this, uh -huh. in the subtitle here. Are you getting spicy? Well, the game gets spicy, so I have to get spicy in order to escalate things. Spice boys. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Each time I'm going to say the word night, I am saying the word night, K-N-I-G-H-T. Into dreams. Yes, but K. No, that's the regular no, other no, night. No, not yeah. yet. Like, so uh, night. Knights of the round table. So you're saying night, night, night. Yes, yes. Knights of round. Yes, yes, exactly. Good, decent Super Nintendo beat-em-up, or arcade beat-em-up, I should say. Okay, Eric, is the subtitle of this chapter, Termina, is it Night or Day, A Night of Much Mystery, or Daylight or Nightlight? Night or Day. Gotta be Night or Day. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Daylight yeah. or Nightlight, no fucking way, man. <laughs> Ding noise. Great job, Eric. Thank you. Finally, you got one right. Got this quest. We're gonna go to Termina, and Termina, you know, I click, I click, there's probably a lot, to, lot, a lot going on in Termina because it's the a last, big city. last time we did that, we spent two podcasts on it. So, hey, let's do it again. Before we get there, we have to go through the Fossil Valley. Drowned Valley plays again. Yes, also called Fossil Valley. Mm -hmm. The two poor soldiers who are here point to us and say, yo, check out that guy's face. Way scary. Our investigation is done. Let's get the hell out of here. I want to go back to poor. Yeah, it's weird because if you try to come here earlier when you before the Fort Dragon yeah. events, they, they, they block you. So yeah, like get lost. The implication here being that like the only reason they're letting us through is because Lynx has a scary face. Right, and he does. Well, yeah, I mean, I agree with that, too. You getting any fights? He has no malice in his attacks, though. Of course it, not. It's the same guys. It's the yeah. same stuff. It's the dingo stuff. Mama dingoes, but there's dodos and drongo. Like, there's a different configuration of them. Yeah. 
There is a chest here that it has the red outlined infrared vision frame. Yeah, it's behind that giant dragon skull up top. Yes. And we're seeing all the same, or I'm pretty sure it's all this is the exact same artwork. It's the same assets. But I think there's a there's new implications now that we know like a little bit more about dragons. Like, was yeah. this thing one of those dragons? Right. Is there like a cycle where one dies and then another, yeah. like, is our little dragon buddy, is he a new one? Yeah. As he inherits the powers of the old one? Is this the mini dragon's previous form? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Could be. He shed skin. <laughs> Fuck is up with this world. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's, that's it. That's no, it. No, nothing Nothing else is going on here. You can go and uh, fight some dodos if you want, but uh, unfortunately there's no little kind of side quest that we can take on right here. Then it is back to the world map for an optional quest in Shadow Forest. Yes. Let's stop by Shadow Forest and see what is up. Welcome to Casual Magic, the show where we explore the fun side of Magic the Gathering. I'm your host, Shivam Putt, and each week we delve into everything from casual formats to explorations of creatures and card types to interviews with designers of the game. At Casual Magic, we believe that it just isn't magic without the gathering. Come along and play! Hey folks, it's Asif Khan, CEO and Editor-in-Chief over at ShackNews.com. Give a listen to our 9 to 5 Elon podcast about Tesla and electric vehicles and all sorts of cool stuff over there on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Forest of Illusion plays as soon as we enter. Yes, it's called Shadow Forest, Eric. Uh-huh. It all looks the same. The bloober dudes are still idling around. The garlic guys are bouncing about. And some kid by the roach hole says his dad went to go get a rare treasure and then became trapped. Mm-hmm. Interesting. By roach hole, uh, I mean, it, this is deep, deep, deep into Shadow Forest after you go in the tree. Yeah, it's really close to where you would sneak into Viper Manor if you take right. that path. So there's multiple things that can happen here. It, it depends on if you took that Shadow forest route right yeah because if not like there's a hole and then like either a wraith will come out and then the the father guy will come out yeah that's what happened for me okay that didn't happen to me i had to find a hidden roach bug in the water down there that i could barely see on this beautiful oled vita screen at 6 30 a.m in a cabin 20 miles away from civilization or like a hospital or fucking anything why am i here yeah uh this makes a guy shoot out of a hole and he says wow i made it out he gives us some shrooms as a token of appreciation like any good hippie yeah (laughs) absolutely isn't it weird that you have to do this because when you took the Shadow Forest route to Viper Manor, it wasn't in this world. It's not like you materially impacted anything. Yeah, right. So, or it's I, just the, the way the game maybe wants to give you a new challenge because I've already there was a wraith up there. I already did something. Oh uh, yeah, maybe that's true. So as the well. game's like, hey, go find the hidden roach, and these all these other roaches are getting in random battles with. This was very frustrating for me. Yeah, I, 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 I vulnerable saw that. time. Mm-hmm. If you stop by the cave, the cave that you found a piece of skelly in in the original one, you, you would have met a guy there on the way here who's like, mm-hmm. I need a mushroom. He's yeah. like, I want a mushroom. So you, then you know where you have to go back. If you Do you think he wants a mushroom just from that dialogue because he needs to trip balls or because he likes mushrooms? I think he really likes mushrooms and stew and mushroom soups and stuff like that. And if you remember in the other world... Lisa, the element shopkeeper, was always talking about how her father was obsessed with finding mushrooms. Yeah. And it turns out they're, they're the same guy. This is Lisa's father. So then you can give him the mushroom, Eric. You present the mushroom and he says, capital letters, hey, let me see that mushroom like a fiend. Mm-hmm. He says it's a rare mushroom found only in Guardia, or so it seems. Chrono Trigger reference. He wants to make a deal, Chris. Our yeah. mushroom for his treasure chest. Sure. You accept or refuse? I accept his deal. What's he do? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote he fucking goes to town. Yeah, my guy just starts eating it. He talks about its rich fragrance. Yeah. Says it melts in his mouth and notes how the firm texture brings out the flavor. Yeah, this is a this guy's full like food network judge right here. Like he says the words D E a couple of times and then what happens as he tries to say the word delicious? He turns into a mushroom. Man. He finishes his sentence with delicious <laughs> and he is complete mushroom. Yes. He gets really confused. I, I guess he's confused because he's reading our reaction to him. Yeah, he's a mushroom guy and he doesn't know. Yeah. He asks if he has something on his face. Yeah, and so then he goes and checks his image in the reflection of the water. Yeah. Uh-huh. And freaks out. He sneezes and then yells <laughs> no and labels himself a mushroom monster. Yeah, I think whenever he, he sneezes, like some spores pop out of his yeah, head and stuff. It's cool. The, it's pretty funny. He blames us immediately and asks if we could do that to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Radius apologized. Yeah. He's... <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so funny because I just wish you could have this moment with with a different configuration of characters. Like yeah. I wish this was this was Skelly or somebody. Yeah, here. like Skelly would be so amused. Yeah, so happy. Skelly would be like, okay, why don't you just join us? Because you know we're after this whole frozen flame yeah. thing, which we've not said shit to Radius about. No, it, it it kind of bothered me as the de facto leader that my newest recruit is now recruiting science experiments while we're all high here on LSD. <laughs> yes. 
Like, this is not the time to get new party members, yes. Radius. This is this is no time for this shit, Radius. But, yeah, but you're right. Radius says the frozen flame, which I didn't know Radius knew about, may be able to change him back to normal. Yeah, now this guy has a name in the text. His name is Fun Guy. Get it? Fun Guy. I'll stalk you through the depths of hell. Yeah. Then he screams and sneezes. <laughs> Fun Guy joins your party. Victory music. Wow. Great. Great. It, it, it's happening. It's happening here. We got a new guy, Chris. Got another new guy. You ever seen this guy before? I've seen this guy in screenshots. I don't think I ever interfaced with this guy previously. Like, before we play this, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to use all the weird characters. And now I'm just like, I'm not I'm not putting him in my party. What? Are, come on, what are we doing? No, I'm not going to do it. Like, I feel like we found the guys that we like so far. Yeah. Like, we like Skelly, and there's a couple of other guys that were... I can tolerate Greco. Yeah, Greco's pretty cool. Anyway, I've got some information on Fun Guy for oh, you. Oh, yeah, Fungi. Uh, his, his occupation, Eric. Mushroom. Mushroom Man. <laughs> Good uh, PS2 game. Yeah. Really? Okay. Mushroom Men? Nope. Not, not familiar with it. Maybe it's GameCube. Continue. Uh, his age is unknown. Now that he's a mushroom, we can't know his age. Yeah. Because was he just born? Or, yeah, or he was, was he... just born. <laughs> okay. He was just born. It, today. Okay. Fun guy was born a few minutes ago. 20 years ago. His origin is Termina, which we, we talked about how he's from, or he's Lisa's father. Uh, his height is six foot. Six feet tall. He's six feet tall. It's a big ass mushroom. I think that goes to the tip of his. Yeah. 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 All the way to the tip. His weight, which is, this is hilarious. His weight is now 66 pounds <laughs> because he doesn't have bones yeah. or organs or anything. Uh, his build is light and he's right-handed. The great battle companion. 66 it, pounds, six foot tall dude. Yes. And I love the explanation for the uh, the Japanese name here in um, on RPG Shrines where I pulled this from. Uh -huh. His Japanese name is Kinoko, which is Japanese for mushroom. This this man is, mushroom man, is element is yellow, which is kind of the, the element of Cowardly. earth. Uh, a lot of the Earth spells are there, so that makes sense. His weapon is axe or hammer. Somebody gave the mushroom an axe. <laughs> Old boy hammer. He was already trained on, on axe combat. And uh, his accent is, is, of course, not normal. His fortune uh -huh. is there might be a way for you to return to your original body, but it's a matter of which you prefer. So is, is he's, he's going to stay the fun guy? Yeah, is fun guy's ultimate destiny to learn to accept being a fun guy? Yeah. Okay. That's the lesson here. Okay. He's like, he's a one-off character from Seinfeld, I think. <laughs> so, did you see what was it? Did you get what was in his, his sacred chest? What we made this stupid trade for? Yeah, I forgot though. It's a forest charm. Like, oh, who cares? those are kind of okay. They're though. Kind of okay. But like, it's now not we exciting. have like I think we have pretty much all the charms now. Did you speak to him again? No. He says. The frozen flame thingy must change him back because he's too embarrassed to speak with his family. At this point, I didn't know who his family was. Yeah. So I was like, well, that sucks, dude. Hope you find yeah. it. Yeah. Great. Great, guys. You do anything else in the forest of illusion, the uh, shadow forest? No, I think I fought some bad guys, but I didn't, I didn't know anything new. Sentient garlic. So we're back to the world map. I briefly stopped by Viper Manor. The soldiers says they will not let anyone through until Commander Norris arrives. And that's all we can do here. This is the kind of the first hint that the Acacia dragoons are no longer available. <laughs> Did you look at it on the world map? It is a pile of rubble. Oh, Viper Manor is? Yeah. Okay, I didn't it is, notice it that. It is decimated. Oh, cool. So, are we to believe that the poor military is taken over? I, I yes. guess, I guess that, that'll they be They are an occupying shortly. force. Yes. Absolutely. So then we're back into Termina, the homeworld Termina for the first time, and we hear Termina homeworld. Are you sure? I got Fossil Valley music when I came in here. It's possible. <laughs> were you playing on your Vita still? Yes. I was confused because I, I just... Fakenet, what kind of music we got here? Initializing Fakenet. Chris is correct. It's the Fossil Valley music. Thank you. And that, that confused me, but I guess it's because the, the well, Termina is currently being occupied. When we went into Termina in another world, it briefly played Termina Homeworld music for like 15 seconds or yeah. some shit. So I don't know what they're doing with that. It could be Fossil Valley still. I, I think it maybe will be that way for a little bit longer, but who knows? Maybe my shit's fucked up. Who knows? So as soon as you walk in... Also, I was playing this section while I was watching the debate, so... Oh, God. Yeah. Jesus. It's not. It was not a great experience. I don't recommend it. Well, we know how that ends now. <laughs> yeah, who's the president? Yeah, we know the president is now. Probably. So if uh if memory if, if if memory serves me correctly from my original playthrough here, like th this might be our last major town to go through. I mean, we've we've got to go through Home Goldove, I think, and and Home Home Marbule, but like this is the last big hub, I think. There's a big uh, big place called Zelbus. We're gonna go to later, Chris. Oh yeah, it's might a as boat. well be a town. It's a boat. Okay, okay. I stand corrected. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we walk into town, the guy behind the guard tower hisses exclamation points. Yes, three he, of them. He recognizes Lynx and says, "How dare you have the nerve to return to this tower? Get out of here, Chris." We know what Lynx did yet, other than everyone is like 
impressed by his foreboding menace? Are, are we? Uh, yeah. Well, I think I need to. A- I need to answer your question with a question. Are we assuming right now that the links that we know is the links from this world who came over to to the another world? I think he can dimension hop okay. or has before. Like, there's only one nefarious. I mean, if there's two nefarious links presences, fuck me, but. So we knew that Lynx was working with, uh, was originally working with the poor military, but then he kind of went on Viper's side yeah. in, in another world. Viper went on his side, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. So maybe he did some sort of reverse. Maybe this world is partially, this world has different diverging destinies because of Lynx applied different types of treachery yeah. <laughs> in each one, maybe just to try to figure out the best way to get to Fort Dragonia, perhaps. I don't know. But he's definitely well known around here and not well liked. What's interesting is they only know about Lynx's crimes in another world. We really have no idea what he's done here. Radius notes that the youngin, who I guess is Lynx, is unwanted here as well. Fun script note. Mm-hmm. That dialogue where Radius says youngins, that is specifically written for Radius. If you don't have Radius, then there's generic dialogue. Okay, that's good. That's Thank you, Chris, for your hard labor. <laughs> yes, I got to use that whenever I can. Harley notes that humans spelled like the Gorilla's album are very selfish, <laughs> suggesting they used to bow their heads to curry favor with Lynx. Yeah. They're always searching for something to lay their blame on. Mm-hmm. True. True and very true. Next observation, dude, this Termina sucks. There's no one here. The flowers and pageantry, at least on the first screen, are completely absent. Red, poor flags are posted at the entrance, noting I, what I assume is an occupation. I think their crest or whatever is like a chimera kind of thing. Oh, yeah, is that like, what that is? Like a, a weird like dragon? A, you like see it wing, outlined. Winged wagon, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I said winged ligon. I knew what you're talking about, man. Winged ligon. Ligon. Liger. Uh, Liger. Okay. So, Sprig also has unique dialogue at this moment, too, uh-huh. before we, we, we continue on. If, if you bring her. Oi! We didn't bring her, so. She says, you humans are downright selfish creatures. And True. I, I want to note how creatures is spelled. Yeah. C-R-E-A-T-C-H-A-S. Creatures. Beautiful. Crutches. Uh, always searching for someone or something else to lay the blame on, aren't you? Which, apt. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so now we have free roam. The soldier by the clothesline says he's on patrol duty and not to bother him. Mm-hmm. So this is where I noticed the emblem in the center of town has been replaced by that stamp of a blue dragon with a red outline. But Chris is submitting Chimera, and I happen to agree. Yes. I, you, you know why you know I'm, I'm submitting that? It's why? because the statue oh. of, of, Vi- of Viper at the mm-hmm. top of the thing is now a giant winged lion, a Chimera. So it's got gold trim of the poor dragon emblem, the same creature that was on the floor, right? Yeah. Uh, the wa- I call this person up here the waxer dude. Oh, I've got statue polisher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, says, Arg, it's such a pity. The statue of Master Viper I've polished every day has been changed to this. The once magnificent manor is also long gone. If only Master Viper were here, none of this would have happened. So Viper gone. And then he recognizes Lynx. A soldier in the middle also recognizes Lynx and is impressed that he's safe mm-hmm. and asks where he has been. He tells us that off to the west at the Termina Dock, they have set up a military camp. No one may pass without permission from Norris. Not even you, hmm. Sir Lynx. So you've he heard tells, the name Norris a couple of times. So Norris is probably the next person we've yes. got to find. He tells us to go find Norris at Viper Manor. So I think that's the flag where we can go actually put Norris in Viper Manor to continue the plot. Right. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stay here. Of course. The guy in the tower says the view up here is great. He's thinking of moving here from the mainland of the country. Also, with the context, are we to assume Lynx was in league with Poor? I think he was simply because, remember, he was, he was noted as an envoy from Poor. Mm-hmm. By the dragoons when we were in visiting the other world. Manor. Yeah, in the other world. So I think he was affiliated with both and, and maybe he took different... Act- I mean, it seems like he was playing different scenarios simultaneously. Like he was hopping back and forth in the world being like, if yeah. I do this, can I do this, etc. I have a notebook where he keeps track of the same people. In the yeah, he, he's basically uh, taking different routes to, uh, you know, push the marble on two different Rube Goldberg machines <laughs> and see what the fuck happens uh, until he can get what he wants, which he got in the other world. There's a big cannon up here. Yeah, it's a it's a, a Vandercom level cannon. That's exactly what I said. Very good. Yes, uh, and the soldier calls it a st- uh, state of the art weaponry. As long as we have this, the citizens of Termina wouldn't dare revolt against us. This cannon. Yeah, even though it's pointing at the sea. <laughs> yeah, like what are you? Whatever. Man. <laughs> so I started going in places on this first screen. You go in places, or are you run out of content. Chris? No, I've gone in all. I think all the places I've gone into. Let's yes. Let's go to the inn. Yes, let's go to the inn. There's no one there. Chris, the shit buckets are still in the room. Are these new toilets? I have the same thing written down to ask you, Eric. I think they're new toilets. I think they're new toilets. I think they're new toilets. Play yes. the sound effect. The world has not been mended. Add two toilets. The Chrono Cross Toilet Count. Six. I think we're at six. Front desk is no person, but they have a note. Yes, uh, it's like we're gone, but you can sleep here if we you want. We have closed our business. Visitors are welcome to stay for free. You can stay or not now. Lisa's. Lisa is still here. She says she's low on stock, though, despite having identical items. Yes. 
Lisa ain't got shit that I need. If you go into her back room, the screen freezes and she busts in there. I thought she was going to kick me out, but instead she asks if we're looking for her father. Yes, this is a tip that you can go to the fun guy quest right now. Yes. She says she's sorry, but he's out in the forest gathering mushrooms. And this is where I put it together. Yes. She told him she's doing inventory tomorrow, then wonders when he will be back. Quote, the mushroom hobby of his drives me crazy. One day he's going to turn into a mushroom himself. Oh, that grumble, grumble. Yeah. Dude. At this point, I pictured Lynx doing the, like, the Nick Cannon question mark meme. Yeah. <laughs> like, just looking up and be like, oh. Initializing fake net. Hilarious picture. One of my favorites. But that's Nick Young and not Nick Cannon. And I did check, and there are, I, I'm not exactly sure where it occurs, but there are some moments here, if you have fun guy in your party, where, it may be this moment, actually, where he doesn't say anything, but, mm -hmm. like, he gets three dots. <laughs> well, no. See, I, I reloaded an older save because I was like, I have this motherfucker. Oh, yeah. And I put fun guy, the large anthropomorphic mushroom man, the talking mushroom person who was also Lisa's father, into my party and tried this again. Nothing changed. Oh, okay. Maybe it's later then. Okay. However, cool. that's arguably funny too if he just knows <laughs> Like if there's like a, an actual uh, mushroom guy there that like looks kind of like your dad. Yeah. It feels like maybe when they wrote this or triggered all this sequence, maybe you would have had to do the Lisa thing first yeah. and then go out there. But of course... That's not how it works. Video games. You Video. go to the bar? I did go to the bar. It's full of soldiers like bars are during wartime. Mm -hmm. A soldier at the first table is here relaxing. He wants to share a mystery with mm -hmm. us. Of course, I want to hear that mystery. It happened three years ago, Chris. Mm -hmm. Viper and his men disappeared from the manor. They searched the manor for them, but found no traces. He can only guess that they were spirited away. He wonders if the same thing could happen to him someday. He's afraid, even when he's not trying to think about it. Mm -hmm. Then his buddy says something different. Yeah, that's the one that doesn't like Norris? Yeah, he says, that guy Norris sure is cocky. He's still young, but he doesn't hesitate to voice his opinion without any flattery. He never loosens up and doesn't seem interested in any kind of fun. He's the best of the Termina division, ah, which I think go. means the occupying force of Termina. Yeah. Gosh, he's so elite. Yeah. My guy wants to fuck Norris. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I'm looking forward to meeting Norris. Do the other table? In the green vest, mm -hmm. how tasty Dragon's Glory is. It seeps down deep, he says. He also says the rare dried lizard dish is great, too, as is the local dish, Chris, the squid gut pasta. Of course, we know about that. This guy only wants to get fatter, apparently. How about the lady in the nice dress? Um, At the same table? Yeah. It's nice to be here. It's peaceful compared to the mainland. So she's like a wife? Colonist? Yeah. Maybe? Like, what is she doing here? Yeah, I'm not sure. The bartender recognizes Lynx as the guy at Viper Manor and says, yeah. get yourself out of here. Our beautiful Termina has been turned into a mess because of you. Three exclamation points. We don't serve your kind here. Star Wars bartender. The back room is still locked. Of course. Will that thing always be locked? I think so. I doubt we can ever go in there. That's all I did in the bar. Then I went up to the third level houses. Where'd you go? The sick girl's house. Yeah, I went in there. As soon as we walk in, the person talking to a little girl notices Lynx. They are surprised that he is still alive. Hmm. They say there is nothing wrong here in this old shack, then ask if Lynx would like some tea or something. Thanks, bud. The little girl is a bit harsher. Yeah. She says, get out, you big stray cat. I don't like you. <laughs> the terrified parent tells her to stop that. Then the kid cites their father as the one who was always saying it. Yes. Quote, if this guy never came here, we would never be in this mess. So that's the classic trope of like, you know, the occupying force comes and the little kid says something fucked up and the parents just trying not to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the parent right. then deflects and says the child is talking about the stray cat that always steals their fish. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Both of them apologize. Everything else here appears to be the same. Yes. I don't think she has a respiratory illness this time. I'm not sure. It's not, it's not clear. Yeah. I did notice that you can see a, a guard walking yes. past the window here. Which on down nice Grifter's little, Row. Yeah, nice little touch. And there's Skelly's house. Yes, uh, anything different here? Grandma's still worried about Skelly, and the other, the other lady suggests the poor army took her grandson away. Yeah, this was the moment when I, when I realized I couldn't teleport anybody back with me. Yeah, like I, I kept go, thinking about that yeah. and then I couldn't. Yeah. Teleport. Teleport. Skellyport. So, Eric. Yeah, Chris. You guys sound slightly louder now. Almost like there was a nine-day break between the previous 33 minutes and the remainder of this episode. Hey, Chris, what's the War Rocket Ajax podcast about? Well, Matt, if we were smart, it'd be about murders. But it's actually about comics. War Rocket Ajax. It's not about murders, but it is weekly on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Hi, we're Ellen, Steven, and Mark, hosts of Nice Games Club, the show where nice game devs talk gaming and game development. Topics include programming, design, tools, and more. We also do interviews and one of our game jams. Listen to Nice Games Club wherever you get to your wherever you get to your podcast. You get there. <laughs> 
or at nicegames.club. Where are we going next here in Termina? Well, Chris, 10 days later, we're going to go to Grifter's Row. Grifter's Row. Yeah. I don't think it's called Grifter's Row anymore, by the way. I think it's called uh, Vanderkam Alley. Yeah. What something. we know is Grifter's Row. It's the area that you go off to the right and it goes down to the shrines or to uh, the smithy into Van's house. Yeah. This is where there was a, a guy drawing your picture. Uh, the fortune teller was here, obviously. And now it's just completely inhabited by poor soldiers and like 12 cannons or something. Yes. I didn't count them. It's just cannons lining the walls. All the merchants are gone. The banners are all flags of what I assume are the poor military. There's a soldier installed in the middle, and he tells me that they're going to open fire on any suspicious ships if they do not respond to their call. Did you linger long enough to realize that the, uh, you, you know how in the another Termina, there were like Korcha-like ships that were going underneath yeah, their constantly? Yeah, boats. Now they're like poor pontoon looking mm-hmm. things that, that, that are going under there now. It's very... Uh, the poor pontoon. Let me let me talk about that later. <laughs> Imperial. Yeah. Okay. The other soldier says to inform him immediately if we find anything. And I'm like, what are we looking for? Yeah. A lot of people are, a lot of the soldiers just say something like that. It's like, if you see anything, mm-hmm. see something, say something. Yeah. Welcome to Giuliani's New York. <laughs> Gi- Giuliani's Termini. <laughs> Let's clean up this smut. <laughs> yeah. So my question is, these guys are super paranoid and we don't know what they're looking for and there's no enemy in sight. Chris, are these guys on speed? I think we're in the middle of an occupation. Well, yeah, but they've suppressed all kinds of it's, shit. Yeah, I, I, that's what I think. I think they're like, they, they're occupying this to look for something, but I don't know what they're looking for is the, the vibe I got. I don't either because spoilers in this world, the dragoons are gone. Yeah. Like there's, they're not even here. Yeah. They've uh, either disappeared or they've been snuffed out. We'll have to find that out later. Let's head to the shrine. Okay. It's empty. Yeah, there's nothing here except for the legendary sword of the Einlander. Yeah, one soldier patrolling around says he checked the rusty sword in the ground. He thinks it's probably called the Sacred Sword in honor of a lost member. Sacred Sword of what, dude? Uh, yeah, who knows? Like, we know this thing is important, but is it actually, does it actually have some sort of mystical power or, or I mean, does it have some sort of, does it have some sort of play in this world? Like, does it, is, yeah. d- does the science do something to it? Yeah. Does the Einlandsiness make any sense? Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of how once all the legend keepers have left the building or the premises or the region, mm-hmm. that it is up to the new populace to make its own legend. Like there is this exercise equipment in nearby Charlie Vetner Park that ostensibly is for doing sit-ups, but oh. I remember it because my friend Jeff fell over and knocked out his front teeth. Oh, okay. Like to me, that is what that's for. Gotcha. It's just there. Yeah. It, did you know that it has the same epitaph as it did in the other world as well? Oh, really? With yes. Garai and... I uh, don't think that the Dario thing is on there, though. My note says, I checked the sword myself and it appears Garai and Dario are still buried here. Radius oh, okay. asked for forgiveness from Garai because I guess I had him with me. Yes, he did. Th- yeah, that happened with me as well. So that contrasts with the idea of a couple of, of the poor soldiers on another screen saying they're looking for Dario. Hmm. So... I'm not quite sure what's going I don't know if that's a, a miss or not. Translation error, or maybe like they've realized that Dario in this world is not as dead as he seems. Mm, perhaps. You go to Greco's house that's not Greco's house? Yeah, there's a lady in there. Oh, uh, I got a guy. Uh, okay. Could Chris be. and I are bad at determining gender. The, there's a person in there, and they say that we should not wander around here. They say there are uh, spirits or ghosts walking around. One appeared here last night and said his name was Getz. Probably another lost soul attached to this world. Chris, who's Getz? Getz has something to do with Greco. It's his son. His son. Remember okay. that he like lost and needed forgiveness from and like feels bad about all the time. Okay. I wasn't explicitly sure if the, if, that it was his son or his partner or something. Initializing fake net. Lord knows what in the hell Eric is talking about, but Getz was Greco's friend and not his son. This is where you have to make a note to yourself to bring Greco's ass here later. It's funny. I went to go change party members because I was like, oh, just like I brought fun guy to Lisa's, I wanted to go bring Greco and I went to go switch parties and I was like, I'm Lynx. Can't do it. Yep. I am no longer Surge, therefore I do not have his friend circle. That person point. also said that living beings are too radiant for the spirits. Chris, do you believe this? As a living being, are you too radiant for the spirit? Or are no. you going to make communication <laughs> with the alternate dimension ghosts? As I sit here on November 3rd, 2020, absolutely not. <laughs> At 6, 7 p.m. when <laughs> states are reporting? Yes. No way. No. That's all I did there. It's. Do you think Greco exists in this world? Like, what? Where is it? Is there a reason people aren't here? Like, surely Surge's I don't rebellion think... against fate hasn't transformed these people into non-entities right i don't it's hard to say because i I don't know enough about greco's backstory to understand if luchador priest okay well yeah good enough uh (laughs) i think probably not i think greco's not not around here maybe he maybe maybe they both died maybe he didn't don the mask and he's just some guy oh he got ray mysterio yes okay we'll check on that later 
So Six. next I went to the blacksmith shop, right? Mm-hmm. The little kid in the doodle suit. Ah, uh, yes, the running around kids. Yeah, the running around kids. Well, the, the one who loves boats still loves boats. Oh, yes, of course he does. Uh, his dialogue seems like it's exactly the same, except for he is, of course, no longer obsessed with Corch's boat. He's just obsessed with the stupid, poor pontoon boat. Yes. Uh, the next I went to the little backyard area out yes. there with the kids running around. The little girl in the backyard says that Paul is working hard to join the Black Wind of Poor. So Black Wind, we already know, we can assume by this that Black Wind, because Black Wind sounds cool, is Poor's elite special forces. Yes, Desert Fox special ops. Acacia Dragons, yes. if you will. Yes. Yeah, and then she wonders if this, this kid, Paul, will ever tell her that she will be his wind. I'll be your wind. Then she sighs. Yeah. Paul will not be the wind beneath her wings. Yeah, it's very melancholy. Paul tells me the key to a gunfight is balance. Yeah, I think that I've, I've never fired a gun in my life. Have you? Like BB guns? Yeah, I never fired a gun, nor do I intend to. But I think balance is a key component of that, right? I think balance, and then you want to point it at what you're shooting, I believe. Also, <laughs> also true. Uh, the kid says that's what Mr. Norris said. Uh, this kid is running around to train himself to stay on his toes. He assumed Norris got strong the exact same way. By this point, we can assume that one, Norris is in this black wind, and two, Norris shoots guns. Yes, that's important lore. I think this is maybe the second or third time we've heard about Norris. We've heard his name dropped a couple times throughout our our, our travels in Termina. This means we're either going to kill him or recruit him. Mm -hmm. Possibly both, depending on the world. Perhaps. Then we go inside the house formerly belonging to Glenn, maybe, perhaps, in this world. What's Glenn's last name? Do they have those? I think it's Glenn of House Glenn or something like that. Glenn Dragoon. (laughs) Yes, perhaps. The first soldier I spoke with in here says that he hears that Glenn is an extremely hot-tempered and hard-headed guy. Present tense, Glenn's still around. Yes, also can confirm. Yes, that's true. Uh, And then he says, my, my, that's why prehistoric soldiers like knights are such a nuisance. So this guy's commenting on how like the idea of the Acacia Dragoons is stupid to them because they're... They have gunpowder. Yeah, they have. Yeah, exactly. They they, they have discovered gunpowder on their their Civ Five tech tree, and they're like several years into guns too, because they're not like packing rifles with the the shit that you pack them in and fire one bullet, then spend five minutes reloading while your buddy bayonets you in the neck. Yes, those are called muskets, Eric. Whatever. These are not musketeers for sure. So the soldiers in here, fucking just... musketeers, have swords, Chris. Well, they have both. Really? I, saw, I never saw that movie. That's why they're called muskets. <laughs> That's why they're called musketeers, because they have muskets. Okay. <laughs> it's chocolate. It's nougat. Anyway. The soldier by the window says this is where Glenn and Dario used to live. He notes that some people have claimed to see Dario. They thought the Acacia Dragoons were gone, but this troublemaker has come back. Ah. So is Dario a trouble? Like, Dario is very revered and honored back in another world. But in Homeworld, Dario is seen as like a nuisance that just won't die. I think so. And I think sometimes when we see the word troublemaker in Japanese media... I think it has a stronger meaning to them than it does to us. Because to us, we're thinking about, you know, Ark. Right. Or some silly kid that's, you know, knocking pumpkins off the wall or Spinning something. Spinning his propeller hat. Yeah, that, that kind of shit. So, yeah, so I, I guess that's what they're looking for. They're here looking for Dario because they're trying to snuff out all the existence of these uh, nightly fellers. I don't remember what happens, but I so hope that Glenn in this world, rather than being like a aloof well-to-do dumbass is just a hyper competent asshole yeah that would be great yeah mr Cotto did not have enough foresight to do something that good sure spoilers yeah a soldier staring into the wall says that dario seems to have been an exceptionally dignified man quote if he's still alive we should enlist him into the black wind yes aspirational fantasies that's all i've got for the glenn house house yeah, glenn that's it Time to go to the smith yeah did you notice that they don't, they don't have the smithy sign on the outside like they do in oh, another didn't. There are some pre-rendered background variants in yeah. a lot of these places. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we go in there and there's no one at the counter it's either. Empty. Yeah, you, it used to be Zippa and chilling the, there. Now Zippa and Zappa are staring at the furnace. Yes, indeed. They appear to be closing down shop. Yes. The quote that uh, Zappa says when you walk down, down into it, he says, Aye, that should do it. This here forge has always had a fire since Alden times. Alden times. Alden times, indeed. Tis sad to see it without its blaze. And then he admits that he is closing the shop for, quote, my own selfish desires. Pornography addiction. Yeah. Zippa doesn't want to hear his shit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I like Zippa. And she asks if he's really going to leave this place behind. What is the state of Poor's occupation? Can independent businesses not operate? Because Lisa seems to be doing fine. So does the barkeep. 
Like they're not happy with it, but they still appear to be able to make money. They've got, but the poor military uses guns, and he mm-hmm. was making weapons for the dragoons. So Smart. maybe maybe he's maybe he's been run out of business, or maybe he yeah. just doesn't want to do work for a occupying force, mm-hmm. which is, could also. And be there's the no case. traveling ren fair for him to smith blackness. Yes, his response to, to Zippa is that he agrees that he is going to finish quote what we started long ago. You stay here and wait for Karsh's return. Right, since they started Karsh by fathering him he's gonna wait until he's back yeah he's missing okay that, that that's the point here is that karsh is along with the rest of the dragoons are all missing and they either have information or are holding out hope that he's coming back because zippa says that it's already been three years since karsh has been gone and those years have not been good to them and that's an important hint too from the perspective of what happened in this timeline because it means it means that the the Acacia Dragoons did whatever they were doing in Fort Dragonia in the in another world. They did something much earlier. They moved in on whatever goal they were after. I guess they chased after the Frozen Flame a lot earlier. Links gave them, gave them the intel much sooner. Yes, I think that's I, and, I, and I think that's what we're going to learn. Learn is that Links was able to hop between worlds, not necessarily to get information differently, but to experiment with different scenarios, which. Makes Link's pretty cool <laughs> as a villain. So, doubling down on what Chris said, she also says the dragoons are their best patron as they disappeared, and the poor military gets on their arses. Yes. She notes that since they've had so much bad luck, it has to get better, because that always works. Yes, indeed. She, she implies that Karsh is probably fine. Mm-hmm. I speak with Zappa, and he recognizes Radius and asks about Radius's village. Radius says, don't worry about it. There's way worse shit to worry about, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I like Radius a lot. Zappa addresses Lynx for some reason and asks if he knows about, quote, the rainbow, a superb material that can be forged into anything. Zappa is thinking of searching for it. He wants to join us. Yes. It's too bad that we can't tell him that we already have a piece. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, I've got that. Like right here. You <laughs> yeah. can just. Yeah. Your lifelong quest. I solved yeah. it just by uh, giving a girl a book of poems. He says, a hey, great. And then I'll give you a wee token. Yeah, his wee token is quite good. What's a wee token? What do you is... put it? It's like a, you put it in a skee ball machine and it operates. Oh, you're you're thinking a little bit more literally. I'm thinking it's what about, it says, Chris. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm thinking of a token as like a token of his uh, of his goodwill, not a token that you put in the Pac-Man machine to play another round of Pac-Man. Ski ball, ski ball, ski ball. Any example you want. So his Wii token is the Smith's Spirit, mm-hmm. which is really good actually because it means that you can forge weapons and I think armor as well out of uh, save points. Save points, are just like map. Chris Smith intended. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Then. Zappa joins your party. Victory music. Chris, we have some information about Zappa to learn, don't we? We do. Zappa. Profile says obstinate blacksmith. Age 52. Making him maybe the oldest character. Old as shit. Yeah, old as shit. Maybe the oldest character that we've met besides Sprick. Or Radius. Or Radius. Yeah, of course. I'm sorry. My apologies. Isn't Sprick like infinite or something like that? No, Sprick was was in the, the 200 range. His origin is the Xenon mainland of the homeworld. His height is 5'8", and his weight is 181 pounds. His build, as implied by his weight, is solid. I was going to say stocky. He is right-handed. His, na- his Japanese name is also Zappa. His innate element is red. His weapon is, of course, axes, and there's hammers you can get later. And his accent is, of course... Accent. Scottish. Hmm. His fortune, from the fortune teller in another world, is... You shall encounter the two things you seek... But be careful, for one of them is what you seek only in appearance. Rainbows and Karsh? Maybe so. I mean, maybe if we bring the other Karsh to him, Mm. who knows? So then you can speak with Zippa afterwards a little bit, after this little conversation. Did you do that? No. Okay, so she asks us if we've seen her son anywhere. She says his name is Karsh. He's a pretty rough character, but he's a good boy. She says it's tough having a son who's a knight. You never know when he might just come back as a ghost in armor. Which Battle. those things exist in this world. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Fargo's got like yeah. 30 of those things. She says, I wonder what could have happened at the Dead Sea if I could see my son again. I don't know if I'd ask for anything else. So now we know that the Acacia Dragons went to the Dead Sea. The Acacia Dragons in another world, do we know if they're going to the Dead Sea or did Lynx just go there by himself? Well, I don't think he, he pretty much literally and figuratively stabbed Viper in the back. So yes. maybe he's already cut ties with them. He no longer needs them for his quest. Yes. He so, has his key item. Yes. Then she apologizes for making us feel blue, and I'm like, it's okay. Can't rain all the time. Yep. Did you go? Is it all you've got for Mr. Zappa? Yes. Did you go in the back room that Pierre formerly occupied? 
I did. There's some guy in here with no shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the apprentice. He's looking at picture frames. He says he can't be watching Zappa as he hasn't been himself since Karsh disappeared. He doesn't concentrate on his work very often. And he just stares out the window. He's not some love struck youth or something. He's not behaving normally. So the apprentice is weird. Yeah. I'm just be like, yeah, dude, he just signed up to go fight shit with me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to get him to give him my life story. You know how usually Lynx tells him everything? This yeah. Zappa just is like, oh, you look like you know what you're doing. I'm getting mm. the hell out of here. Leaving my wife. <laughs> my wife left me. This guy says he's going to become a trader instead and offers to buy our materials. So there's another outlet for that. Yes. Thanks, guy. I guess. Thanks, man. Yeah. This is my smithy man. So that's it for that place. Where are you ready to go to the next place? Yeah, Van's house. That nice mansion on the end. Yeah, it's right? just, just a regular house now. When you walk out there in the distance, you can see that it's only one story and way shittier. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> on the inside, there's shit everywhere as yes, well. Yes, he's gone from the Van Houtens to Chief Lees. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, you go in there, there's shit everywhere. It's mainly just paintings everywhere. I, most of them look like they've been completed. So he's got one up on uh, our friend Lacan. It's like wooden planks. There's also a kitchen table with paintings stacked on it, a modest blue shelf with painting supplies, one plant, and a single twin bed with the sun shining on the face area. Yes. This is the, the person in the, in the room is not Van, it is Go. Yeah, he's an anonymous guy sitting on a stool and painting, and you're like, who the hell is that? Yeah, and the contrast here is from another world. This, he's the, the rich penny pincher, right? Yeah. And here he is a starving artist. The, he's a pauper. He looks thinner, or is that just yeah, me? Am I, I'm not sure. Uh, so then he says that we can go check on Vaughn in the back room if that's who we're looking for. Yeah, he asks if we're Van's friends. And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm a cat man. I've got mm-hmm. my clown here and my old man. So let's yeah. go. The side room that Van is in also has one bed. It has an aquarium of some sort, a game table, a dresser with a porcelain cat on it, a sofa with an orange creature that looks like some kind of curled up real cat, Yep. one window, three paintings on the east wall, and one of the paintings is being pulled up, revealing a secret compartment. Yes. When we enter, Van is looking into this compartment. Chris, important question. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Van or Vaughn? What are we doing? I'm partial to Vaughn because of uh, the vision of Escaflone, but Okay, fake net, how do you say it? Initializing fake net. Van. The boy's name is Van. Vaughn is the dubious protagonist of Final Fantasy XII. Well, we got to go with that then. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, Vaughn yells at us when, when, when we enter his room, right? Yes. He notices us and like fires. He yells exclamation points and slams that thing he's looking at shut. <laughs> yeah. It's like, please knock like we caught him whacking off. <laughs> Yes. Did you notice that Lucky the Cat is in here? I noticed an orange cat that was real. Who was oh, no. Lucky, Lucky the... the Cat, it was the cat charm statue that was also in the mansion house as well. Oh, okay. So there are some elements of their life that have yes. maintained. Mm-hmm. Van asks us if we're tourists and says that he would be willing to guide us around. He wants to guide me around and give me a tour of an area like this expert who does not even know who Lynx is. Mm-hmm. There is a fee involved, but Van suggests it will still be a bargain. So I hire him. Yeah. Do you think that he has this conversation with everybody that walks into his room? Yes. It's like, please hire me. Yeah. Get me away from here. We need money. Yeah. I don't care if you're a cat man threatening the entire continent. Let's go. Yeah. This is a reality. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so of course we say you got it. Yes. But then we hear Go in the other room hollering about something. Yes. A bill collector has come in the door and they're telling Go he's had long enough to pay his debts. Yeah. And this, they're it, not going to wait any longer. The music stops. Indeed. So this is, I guess this is the landlady. Yes. He either has to pay now or he's going to get evicted. I think he's had a pretty sweet deal considering they have the only house at the entire like third of this continent. Yeah, I know. They're like the only people that own their own property yeah. here. <laughs> but I, I guess that's probably not represented in the whole sure. uh, wanderable area. So there's the obvious irony now between this go and another world's go where one's poor and one's rich. Yeah. Van says he will pay the debt. Yes. The collector doesn't take this seriously and patronizes Van and asks how much he has saved from his allowance. Van says none of your business offers a fee. The collector says it will not even pay off the interest. You never want to hear that, Chris. No, of course not. Interest is, it sucks. Yeah. Van's like, hey, wait a minute, I'll pay up. Then Van says out of nowhere, he's going with us to search for the frozen flame. Yes. Did we tell him our life story? No, we haven't yet. That was actually just, we're going to find out in a few seconds, that Mm -hmm. was just a random thing. Like a bluff. The landlady, of course, doesn't believe him, but me, a cat, Mm -hmm. can back him up. In real life, would this be like if your bill collector came and you said you were going to go find the piss tape? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, I need to go get this legendary yeah. item that could yeah. change our lives. Yeah. I said, no, we're serious. And yes. The other option is a, it's a joke, of course. And I'm not sure if you, if you say if it's, a, if it's a joke, if that locks you out of recruiting Vaughn or not. That's a good question. I also said, no, we're serious. Yes. She still doesn't believe it. She doesn't can't believe, believe this shit. Yeah, can't believe this shit. But she appears tempted to find out what we're up to. And Fascinated. She, yes, indeed. And she agrees to wait a little longer. 
Vaughn is still kind of pissed. He says, Humph, how arrogant of her to push us around just because we're poor. If only we had money. If only we had money. This would have never happened. The collector is also kind of flippant and says, don't burn yourself on the frozen flame. And I just be like, well, actually, it's not a real flame. Yeah, of course. Also, if it would, it was frozen. So like, yeah. you can't burn yourself. So Go then tries to reason with him a little bit. He tries he, to be a father. Yeah, he's, he pleads with him and, and says that his pictures, his paintings are just not good enough to sell yet, but he's, he's going to get there, man. Go's paintings, not Vans. Yes. He says, I only want to sell pieces that I'm satisfied with to those who understand my work. So... It's kind of like how we only want people who really understand us to listen to our podcast. This is true. So if you don't understand us, then fuck off. Turn it off now. Unsubscribe, please. Thank you. And it's nice that, yeah, well, fake Ned, what do you... <laughs> Initializing fake Ned. Chris is one third of retrograde amnesia and does not speak for the entire podcast. Eric and myself encourage you to keep listening even if you don't know what we're talking about. I- I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can listen to us if you want to. Go actually, like, he tries to be a father when he comforts mm. his son, which is nice. Yeah. I do that sometimes. Sure. Not me. Oh, Vaughn can't believe this shit. Yes. And he says he'll have to find a place for them to live. And then he, he looks at us, or I'm not sure if he's looking at us or the landlady, and says, Why the hell are you still in my house? Do you enjoy washing family disputes? There's absolutely positively nothing here, so there's no point hanging around. And then he thanks us for going along with his bogus story. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I guess that he, that, that, that's when you learn that he really did just make that up and we haven't spilled our guts to him just yet. Yes. It was his bogus story, but it's about to be our bogus journey. Yeah. As Van storms into his room, it's like a soliloquy scene alone and the new music, reminiscing, unerasable memory begins to play. I have reminisce enduring thoughts. This is actually not new. This was played on the beach with Lena at one point. Hmm. Well, think. perhaps my memory was erasable and my thoughts did not endure. <laughs> yes. This game has several sad songs, and sometimes it refuses to to deploy them, but this is one of the moments in which it decides to do so. Lost Broken Shards does not play. (laughs) The cat is on the bed now, and Van stares at the artwork hanging on his wall. He thinks it's a pretty good picture and wonders why it doesn't sell. Yeah, he's kind of like pissed off that his dad has this artist code that he lives by, Mm -hmm. live and die by the paintbrush or something. He just wants him to sell the shit, but his dad, of course, is not d- actively out there trying to make a living, which I can understand Vaughn's frustration. Here. Yeah, but that's relatable when you're that, you know, when you're that young, you don't understand why your dad does half the shit he does. Yeah, it's like Go wants to edit his podcast before he releases it. He just doesn't yeah. want to throw that shit out there. He wants it to be good. Of course not. We have to edit out blips, bleeps, and bloops, and smacks. Mm-hmm. And add the fake net. Who's real? No shit. Van opens up the secret safe we already know about and verifies his piggy bank that he was looking at five minutes ago is still here. Yes. He resolves to come up with the money himself. Yes. There's a nice, like, coin clunking sound effect as he shakes it. Yeah. He verifies the money's still inside. He thinks the hardest part would be finding a new place to live because this is the only house in Termina. Yes. And also, I love how... He has three secret layers for mm-hmm. his objects because he goes to his second painting and, and removes it. And there is a what he calls his father's homemade paint color. El Nido Blue. Ooh, nice. But his dad's secret paint, he says, it gives the smell of salt water. And if I were dad, I would have sold this paint by itself and made a fortune. Oh, yeah. So apparently it. he's got this really badass paint. And then he goes to his third one and he receives a seashell left behind by his mother, his only memento of her. He says he hides nothing and states the only reminder between him and his mother is that shell. He notes that it's cracked and he can't even hear the sound of the sea anymore. Mm -hmm. But he remembers it all. Mom found the shell and held it gently to his ear. Van remembers the sound of the sea. Yes. Van also had a fit because he couldn't take it home the sand castle he made that day. He said he has to move out of the house his mom lived in. He tells his mother he'll take good care of his father. I guess his mother, like he metaphorically. Yeah. And then there's a fade out. And somehow we're back in the other room still next. Yes. Then we're back out into the front room and Go is explaining everything to us. Yes. Rather than us telling him our life story, he's telling us his. Yes. He says, Vaughn always had a hard time dealing with our troubles ever since he was a child. I made him do without so many things that he's grown a bit sarcastic. Yeah. Yet he's very kind at heart like his mother always was. One day I wish I could let him do as he pleases, just like other children. And then Van Karate chops the door open. <laughs> yeah. Why are you fuckers still here? And asks, yeah, why we're still here and if we're going to buy one of his father's goddamn paintings. Yeah. Radius and Harley confirm we are really looking for the frozen flame. Like, dude, that was real. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't just make that up. No, Van thinks they're fucking with him, though, and says he knows no such thing actually exists in this world. He asks if we're some kind of simpletons. Radius is like, hey, man, I don't give a shit if you believe this. Yeah. 
And Van says we're looking at him like we're his mom. Quote, your eyes tell me you're telling the truth. Even I can see that. He can't leave his dad here, though. To go off on some fool's errand, Chris. Of course not. Go is like, dude, go do that shit. Yeah, you need to. You don't even have to find the frozen flame. He just wants him out in the world, broadening his horizons. He yes. wants Van to go find happiness. And Chris, I can confirm, traveling, best use of money when you don't have kids. Or when you have kids. I mean, you, you gotta take them and like, they don't appreciate shit, dude. Yeah, well, that's true. Van and Go then share a moment. He asks his father to lock up at night. It would be bad if any of his paintings that aren't worth anything were stolen. Then Go does something questionable. He like says, I need to give you this. And he gives his son a boomerang. <laughs> yes. This is such a non sequitur here. It's so weird. He tells Vaughn, who thinks it's a toy, to use it in time of danger. Yes. This is hilarious. It is hilarious because I believe that boomerang usage requires a considerable amount of finesse yes. and ability and it's training. It's very difficult. Yes. And <laughs> he's just like, here, use this thing. I, I mean, I, I want... In fact, he, he even uses it as a metaphor. Yeah. He says, a boomerang comes back when it is thrown. I want it to be a reminder to you. So I guess it's like, throw this and it will come back to you and you will come back to your father and give me money, I guess. I don't know. Can you imagine the look on Harley or Radius's face when Lynx is like, all right, um, Radius, uh, old Acacia Dragoon, uh, yeah. Deva, you stay here. I'm taking the kid who just got handed a boomerang for the first time, who's, what are you, like nine? Yeah. Come on, let's go. You fight. He's like, he, he's not all about that good luck charm life, but he's like, okay, I'll take it. I need a weapon anyway, because I'm going to be with these fuckers, I guess. Yeah. And then we got to go mm -hmm. before the landlady comes back again. But Vaughn joined your party. Yes. Victory music. Thank you. Before we get to Vaughn's profile, I've got a new working theory about the development of this video game. Yeah. So this game has, what, 45 characters that you can recruit or meet along the way? Thereabouts. Yes. And I have this theory that when they were writing this game, actually, I think Kato has admitted that he assigned different sections of this game to different people. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that each one of those people went out and wrote their own stories for their individual recruitable characters. And Kato was just like, let's, uh, let's, put just, them in. let's just, 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 just put it in there. You tell the, bat the battle and experience planner to just make it work. Yeah, because this is a pretty long scene for a non sequitur kind of character yeah. that has nothing to do with the overall plot. And I feel like they overextended themselves. And maybe they thought that would be a cool bullet point on the back of the box that, well, hey, there's 45 characters. I mean, but if I you give a whole game to the guy who wanted a roller coaster in Lahan Village, yeah. this is what happens. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay, so Vaughn, he is a, quote, Pennywise artist. Does that mean Penny Pincher? Uh, or Street Smart, Money Smart? Yeah, maybe so. His age is 14, his origin is Termina Home, his height is 4'11", his weight is 88 pounds, his build is smallish, he is left-handed. Ew. His Japanese name is Bancliff. <laughs> okay. What? His uh, element is green, his weapon is a boomerang, of course, and his accent is normal. His fortune says, take good care of the ones who love you, my boy. And then his response is, humph, like Vegeta or something. Yes. And that's that. We have Vaughn now, and we'll probably never use him. I'm starting to sub people in who I would never ordinarily, because I have a lot of money. I'm just buying them good weapons and giving them, like, three elements. And yeah, less. I feel like I want to do that with, like, the weird and funny characters, but ones that are kind of, that inhabit that middle ground of, like, they're not weird, they're not funny, they're not interesting, they have nothing to do with the overall plot. Mm -hmm. Those people just kind of get brushed aside. And See you later, Vaughn, Pip. Yeah, l later, Vaughn. Pip, well, Pip's kind of funny. Um, but anyway. Mm -hmm. That's it. Let's check in with the real nut, Eric. Initializing real nut. SSC Ninja asks you who your favorite 13 Sentinels character is. Let's see. I'm about nine hours in, and Amaguchi, I believe, the rich kid with the nice hi fi setup. Oh, cool. Who's smuggling a time traveler at the moment, I think. I don't know. There's so many characters. I'm still like tough to get a grip on them. I also like Chie. Her name's not Chie, but she looks like Chie from Persona 4. Yes. But I, man, I. I fear strategy and tactics games, but I am fucking that game up. Oh, good. Battle system. I've, I'm working on a theory. It's called Grandia is Tower Defense Without the Tower. Because okay. it's kind of the same battle system, only you're defending a tower, obviously. Gotcha. But God, that shit's fun. Cool. Maybe that'll open the door for Final Fantasy Tactics one day, Eric. Don't be silly, Chris. This is real-time <laughs> strategy, not move guys on grid strategy. Okay, StarCraft podcast. Different thing. Real-time strategy is dead. Alter Impulse says, Vandercom is in charge of the poor army in this universe. So many cannons with no Ramses to mock him for polishing his cannons <laughs> too much. Yeah. He gets the Viper Manor guy to polish his cannons. 
There you go. I mean, not the Viper Man, the Viper Statue guy. Dent D says, I'm kind of surprised that you never fired a gun, Chris. I mean, I would, were you in Scouts? No. I, I did like Cub Scouts as yeah. a small kid, but no, I don't come from a gun-toting family. My, my dad is a gun owner now, but it's a pretty recent phenomenon. So uh, it was just never a thing. I'm kind of terrified of guns, too. I fired a potato gun. Does that count? Uh, no. More like a cannon. Alter Impulse says, and I, I totally agree with this, I wish more games had more adult characters. Yeah, right. But that's kind of the JRPG thing. Like, I yeah. think originally it was because of the audience, and now it's kind of because it's the... It's what it's got to be. The trope, yeah. Like 13 Sentinels, these are all high school kids who are also future people who are also command pilots and time traveling. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Dante says, I love this mystery about where the, the Acacia Dragoons went. It's fun to eventually discover what happened. And... That's a good point because this game doesn't have too many mysteries to be solved other than the main mystery of this game of like what is Surge and how does he fit into the destruction of the universe and all that kind of stuff. But that's the one kind of thread that we're that we're tugging at here. Dante says, I like my characters dense in mind and body. Thick is out, dense is in. Says SSD Ninja. Dent says, actually, no, Pennywise means extremely careful about the way one spends even small amounts of money. Mm. Which actually that the makes popular sense. popular culture of clowns yes. just kind of ruined the word for me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Somebody went around my neighborhood the other day and tied balloons to all the, the greats or whatever. Awesome. Yeah, I like great job. That's good suburban mischief. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was an adult. I think it was just somebody that oh, was Oh, for just, sure, yeah. yeah. No, kid's yeah. not going to do that shit. I'm going to do that shit next year. That's a good idea. Alter Impulse makes a good point. Vaughn's boomerang kicks ass because it multi-targets. Well, that's nice, but you can't logically convince me that a small child throwing a boomerang is as good as my links with my twin swallow thing. <laughs> well, you don't think Or Harley throwing rocks at people, whatever that is. <laughs> Who knows? Some shot. Okay. Thanks, Real Net. Thank you for joining us tonight. We will see you next time. The outtakes are coming right up. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia recorded on October 23rd and November 3rd. 2020. Split episode there, Eric. Thank you, Mark. Shepard. For the intro track. You're welcome, Chris. Find us on Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcast. And tell a friend. Spread the word if you want. Email us at retrogradeamnesiapodcast at gmail.com if you like us. Come and support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash retroam. Get early access, bonus episodes, mini series, and more. Until next time, Eric. Yes, we will kill God. And now you may go back to nap. <laughs> Dude, there's a moment in 13 Sentinels where you go to like 2048 or some shit and your character is wearing the Kyle Reese trench coat and he's got like the grizzled five o'clock shadow and beard and shit and he's giving you the fucking like, they will never stop Terminator speech. Oh, it's so good. Cool. It, is, I, it, it is the pulp that I desire. Should I just make them in the next game I'm going to play? Uh, so now we've got to kind of continue the plot uh, in, in b- we're a cat, we're a giant cat with a giant pope hat and we got to go explain shit to our mother. What's the most awkward thing you've ever had to explain to your mother? Uh, the IVF didn't work. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Fucking ask me those questions. I'm going to deliver it, dude. Okay. Do you want uh, the second one? Because it's even worse. Uh, only if you want to share. Actually, no, it's bad. It, it, it's, it's too bad. to Too hot for TV. Okay. I'll tell you off mic. How about that? That's great. Okay. Well, um, I can't really think of a good situation. Um, I can't think of one. Sorry. Okay. Cut that. Um, so, yeah. Now we've got to go back to... to, 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 to <laughs> I fucked you up, dude. I'm sorry. I'm cool. I'm fine. I'm doing great. Doing just fine. I hope so. David Trombone says, it's on mushrooms more like. Yeah. 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 Alter Impulse says, ha ha ha, fun guy when the shrooms hit way too hard. Yeah, dude. Was not prepared. Anana Moore says, did I miss the recording? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry. We didn't. No, I was here. We we didn't gauge enough content. Uh, Yeah. uh, Sorry. It's Eric's fault. Extend your content. Expand your content. Extinguish your content. Okay. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia. Hold on. Let me make sure my intro line still makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank God. Okay. Because I, <laughs> I wrote two intros tonight. And, Shit, Chris. And I wasn't sure if they were contextually uh, appropriate. Start all over. I... God damn it. Chris lost his page in the notes. No, I did. wrote down, one of the soldiers says, inform me if you find anything. And I say, this is how I speak to my children when I lose something around the house. Oh, cool.
Uh, it's not very funny, so I'm not. That's I'm, good. I'm great, great it. joke, Chris. I'm gonna cut it. No, I'm gonna. Um, you leave it. I'll, I'll stick it in there. No, okay. Um, Next. Oh, we hold on a second. Huh? Nope. Never mind. Never mind. I thought I was recording our voices on the wrong track. Uh, but it looks like we're on the right track, folks. We are. Okay, go ahead. What an outtake. He's the best kind of Termina. Division. Go apologizes and says his work isn't good. Oh, you already said that. Who framed Roger Ray? Mom, I had a skull in my back pocket. Eventually mm. I found its ribs and now it's my friend. 